from the Australian Federal Police and we're here today to talk about the arrest of five South Australian men for online child abuse related offences. The South, the South Australia Joint Anti-Child Exploitation Team, or JACKET, which is comprised of officers from the Australian Federal Police and South Australia Police, made the arrests last week as a result of five separate investigations into online child sexual abuse. The five men were all allegedly identified accessing or sharing photos and videos of children being sexually abused. One of them is accused of trying to sexually groom a teenage girl online. We will allege the 39-year-old man thought he was chatting to a 15-year-old girl who he contacted through Facebook. He allegedly sent sexually explicit images to her and talked about sex acts he wanted to perform. Fortunately, on this occasion, there was not a young girl being exposed to sexually explicit images or being sexually groomed. Rather, it was a covert police officer. This arrest should serve as a warning to any adult who wants to try to prey on vulnerable children online. You might not be talking to a child, you might be talking to a covert police officer. This case shows just how children can be targeted through their online activities. Predators may contact children through games, social media or other group chat platforms before trying to encourage them to message privately. These offenders are very manipulative they may pretend to be a child themselves or trick a child into revealing personal information or images which they then use against them. In some cases, we have seen children being groomed and then blackmailed to produce more and more material or images with the fear that if they don't do so, the material will be shared online. Our focus and ultimate goal is removing children from harm and preventing other children from being hurt wherever in the world they are. This focus on making a difference to a child's life strengthens police resolve to hunt down perpetrators and bring them to justice. We will never give up our fight to keep children safe, but we do need help from parents and carers. Part of the reason why we're here talking to you today is because as a society, we still find it too confrontational to talk about child sexual abuse and exploitation. We must have more conversations with the community and inform them that this crime is more pervasive than ever. Research commissioned by the Australian Centre to Counter Child Exploitation has revealed only 52% of parents or carers talk to their children about online safety. By the time police are called to remove a child from harm or arrest an offender, it's too late. The impacts of sexual abuse on the child victim, their family and their friends is devastating and lasts a lifetime. Supervision is critical not only to prevent an incident occurring, but so adults can quickly take action if something is wrong. Parents and carers must talk to their children about online safety and understand what apps, games and platforms their children are using. And most importantly, ensure their children feel supported and protected to come to them if they feel uncomfortable online. If your child is or has been a victim, reassure them it's not their fault and there is help available. Children and young people are never to blame for being a victim of online child sexual exploitation. I'll now hand over to my colleague from South Australia Police, Detective Superintendent James Blandford. Good afternoon and thank you all very much for coming. Detective Superintendent James Blandford is my name. I'm the officer in charge of the Public Protection Branch in uh, South Australia Police. The arrest of five men last week as a result of the, uh, the, the um, jacket uh, operation with assistance from the ACE in Brisbane is a clear indication of our endeavours to uh, protect children and hold people to an account. One of those men charged last week was identified as a result of public health via Crime Stoppers and we never take the community interaction and assistance to us for granted. It's vital and uh, we're um, well served by our community in their cooperation and their work with, uh, with their police. We also work with other agencies in Australia and across the world to identify and bring those people who are involved in child exploitation to justice. The exploitation and the abuse of children is a heinous crime and it knows no borders. And we have a very powerful and a very proud partnership with the Australian Federal Police that assist us to actually deal with this international crime with their contacts within Australia and overseas. And we, we are uh, we're particularly pleased with the, uh, with the establishment of the ACE uh, in Brisbane as the central hub of, uh, of child exploitation material from, uh, which is uploaded from, the, uh, from computers to the web 
and as a source of reference and referral from our international partners. Our job as the police is to enforce, but that's only part of the equation to actually succeeding in keeping our community safe. Enforcement has to be backed up with prevention and education. It's so important that people inform themselves of the dangers of being online and the vulnerabilities of children to predators who wish to satisfy their own needs, whether that's because of a particular uh, sexual desire for young children or whether the manufacturing distribution is done for a, uh, a personal gain. We implore parents to have conversations with their children. We know it's happening in the schools. We think you, should, think you know and play safe. But parents and families need to get involved. Children are vul vulnerable. Children's development is not the same as an adult. They, they need to be given an, a nurturing opportunity to grow up and mature. Unfortunately, because of the explosion of online access, they're exposed to things way too early in their lives and parents have to take responsibility. If not parents, then family, extended family and friends. Look for the resources, they're all available online. If a child or a child that you know has suffered abuse, there are people who, can out, who, who are out there to help them with counselling and support. They're just simply waiting for a, a, a contact. Our best suggestion is go through your GP, get a referral, or look on the, on the web for support services and make a phone call. Inform yourself how you can help victims or suspected victims. Our job will not end. We will continue looking and protecting and saving children from this evil criminality. But we ask the community to continue helping us and also helping us educate and prevent trauma. Thank you very much. Questions? Um, can you talk us through how horrific some of the images were that you, you had to seize and for your, or your team had to? Uh, look, without going any uh, into any detail for obvious reasons, um, these images are just dreadful. And unfortunately, um, we're finding that offenders' collections of these images are getting bigger and bigger. Uh, you know, recently we had um, a very significant investigation here in South Australia where the offender had over one million images in, in their collection. And our team, um, the jacket, or our team of dedicated investigators are going through those images frame by frame to try and identify victims, firstly, uh, that we would seek to rescue from harm, and then, of course, other offenders. And the other thing to remember is that, you know, the people that predators that are engaged in this kind of vile activity around changing, um, exchanging these images, uh, they are involved in, you know, the most heinous of crimes, the children in these images are real children somewhere in the world. This is not a victimless crime. That you know, There are real children being abused and then we're seeing these depraved predators exchanging the images for their own personal pleasure, uh, which is just you know, appalling and we are absolutely committed to finding these people and bringing them to justice. There was a significant spike in the number of people charged with these offences in 2019 and 2020. What do you think that increase in? There was. Uh, the, the jacket in South Australia charged 92 people in 2020, which is up from 60% in 2019. That represents a 53% increase and 56 children were removed from harm in Australia or overseas, which is up from 47 in 2019. I think there's probably several factors uh, which can be attributed to the increase in this crime. Obviously advances in digital technology and encryption and indeed greater access to this sort of technology. But unfortunately, uh, we do consider that the impact of the COVID lockdowns um, has contributed to this increase, um, principally because both offenders and children have been spending more time at home and therefore more time online. In terms of 
children then who are victims in the photos you've seen? Is that a job that you're, you're doing now or you know, should say you need? Uh, it, it is. We're, we're doing it all of the time. And in fact, we have uh, dedicated victim identification experts. In fact, the South Australian jacket, in my view, has got the best victim identification experts in Australia. Um, I'd encourage you, if you haven't seen it already, to um, visit the AFP's website. Um, at the moment, we've actually got some images on our website, which are images from un unsolved cases. Uh, and we're asking members of the public uh, to visit the website and have a look at those images. Um, it's, it's part of, a, I guess, a world-leading project to try to help us rescue more children. Uh, there are nine non-confrontational images on our website which have come from images of child exploitation, for example, pieces of clothing or bedding, um, and we would like the public to view the images and contact the AFP uh, if they recognise the objects in those images so that we can try and identify the children. Um, and as James has said, I know that um, South Australia Police have been um, recently um, supported by members of the public in terms of identifying another offender. So that the you know our engagement with the community is so important in this space. What sort of things would you say the community should be looking out for when it comes to identifying um, these people who are doing this sort of thing? Well, the most important thing is really to talk talk to children about online safety. Ask your children what they're doing on the internet. You know, parents need, adult supervision is critical. Parents need to know what their children are doing on the internet, what they're saying, most importantly, who they're talking to, uh, to ensure that they're not being groomed or that they're not being exposed to some kind of, um, you know, sexually explicit or other, you know, confrontational images. Um, parents need to know where the devices are in their homes um, that children could use to access the internet and when their children are accessing the internet. For example, you know, if your child is in bed with an internet enabled device, you know, talking to strangers on the internet, I would suggest to you that's particularly concerning and it's not something that a parent would allow their child to do if the person was real life. So online safety is particularly important. Um, where parents feel parents or the most important part really is for parents to encourage their kids that if if they're online and you know something happens which makes them feel uncomfortable they need to bring that to their parents or carers they need to be supported and protected to do that um, and then obviously if if that does occur uh, we would encourage parents or carers to collect evidence um, which would involve taking screenshots um, of, you know, from the internet, and then once those screenshots have been collected, um, blocking that, that the access, the child's access to that particular app, and then, of course, contacting police. The arrest that came as a result of um, a particular crime stop, was that from a parent or carer that had recognised that this behaviour was going on with their child? It was from a member of the public who recognised the individual in the image. Any of this group without obviously identifying anyone who hadn't been to court, um, anyone in this group in a profession that would require a lot of contact with children? Uh, the, the men were from a variety of different occupations. Um, as far as I'm aware, none of them were uh, in a profession where they would have regular access to children. And the 92 people charged last year, how does that stack up to other states and territories? Is it a particularly, is it a bigger problem in SA than elsewhere? Uh, look, I don't have uh, the figures with me with regard to the numbers in other jurisdictions, but I can say that um, this rise um, in increased reports of, on, of child sexual abuse online um, is consistent across Australia. Um, the AFP last year accepted 75% more child abuse matters than we did the, the year previous. Um, in the release, it just makes mention of one person still being in custody are all those people still in custody or is it just one that uh, remains in custody? Uh, I don't know the answer to that question. I believe it's just one. Just one. Just one. Um, and in relation to the people who are committing these sorts of offences, I mean, they might think that they're doing it behind closed doors, you know, the privacy of their own homes, but what would you say to them? You know, obviously police are finding them, as you mentioned, you know, they might actually be talking to a police officer when they're 
committing these crimes? Yes, that's right. Uh, what, what I would say to those people that would um, have a view that they might exchange uh, sexually explicit images of children or try to groom children online is that you should be very aware. We are absolutely resolute, together with our partners in SAPOL uh, across Australia and across the world, we are committed to keeping children safe and we are committed to identifying and finding these offenders. We are in the, on the internet, we are working um, in child protection units all over Australia and with the ACE and we will find you. We will come for you and we will find you. Can you tell us a little bit about this platform KIPP? Is that a new app, I guess, that may be used by these sort of perpetrators? Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's an online messaging platform. And is it somewhere where you're seeing a rise in offences or is it just one of many? It's one of many, it's across the board. Are police finding that just as they sort of shut down sites and platforms to be able to share this sort of material that tend to popping up in its place? It, it, it continues to increase, yes, which is particularly concerning for us. Um, we last year received um, around about 21,000 reports um, of this sort of activity, um, primarily from the US, uh, where most of the kind of big, you know, service providers like Facebook and Google would be located. But yeah, it continues to increase. And any of these images part of what you consider as a global ring or a, a wider, a national ring? Sort of Look, almost certainly the offenders that are involved in um, exchanging this sort of material uh, communicate with offenders all over the world. So almost certainly they would, they would be exchanging images with people in other countries as well as across Australia. And for every sort of one that's reported, you said I think 21,000 last year reported, for every one that's reported, is it your sort of view that there'd be you know, many, many more that are just going completely undetected? Yes, that would be right. Yeah. Maybe a final one for James or yourself, but how likely is it that you know, any of these five men will actually go to jail? I mean, that's, a, that's a matter for the court, but the, uh, I think there's a community expectation and the courts take a very dim view of child exploitation uh, um, and, you know, it would be, the, the, the penalties are there for terms of significant imprisonment um, and I think that would, that would definitely be on the, on the table for the court to consider. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.